Yo, what's up y'all? Welcome back to another video where today I will be showing y'all how to make a secret door in Roblox Studio. So the secret door we'll be making today is a concealed sliding door. So what it will do, whenever you activate it, it'll push out right here like that and it will move over to the side so we can walk through the door and then right after it will shut behind us. So let's get right into this y'all. To begin, we'll make our door. What I'll do is I'll have three wall panels. Let's move our dummy here. We'll have three wall panels about this big. We'll turn collisions on. So our middle one will be our door. So what we can do is we can take this one, we can name this door. And what we'll do, we'll click this plus sign, we'll add a script to our door. We can call this door handler. So to begin, let's just get a few things out of the way. So we're gonna go ahead and get our closing time. We can put this to two seconds for now. So once you walk through the door, once it's fully open, this is how long it will take to shut the door back behind you. And what we need to get now is we need to get our easing style of sign. So we can get local sign, easing style sign. So whenever we tween the door open, it'll make it into a sine wave so it goes smoothly. And now we also need to get our tween service. So we can do local tween service. Use game get service, tween service. What we can do now, we can go ahead and identify our part. So script.parent, we can get our cframe one, which is part.cframe. And then what we need to do, we need to get our wall. We need to go into view and click view selector. So we see right now, the skinny part of my wall is facing the Z axis. So what I'll do, we can put local cframe two is our C frame one plus our Z size. So we can do vector three dot new zero zero part dot size dot Z. So what this will do, since this part right here is two blocks wide, it will move the part two blocks over in the Z axis. So if your wall is facing this way, you would get your view selector. You see that's on the X axis. So you would instead put this right here and you put it part dot size dot X. Now that we have this, what we can do is our third C frame is our cframe2 plus vector3.new part.size.x00. So this would be the same way. If this is your x value, then you'd want to put the z value right here on cframe3. So what this will do, once your wall is pushed out to here, it'll slide it over to this side. And now what we will do, we'll make our tween. So we can do local tween1 is tween service create. We put our part in, we can put tween info dot new. And for our door opening, we can just go ahead and put 0 0.5 seconds and then we can put our sign easing style. And then now what we need to do is we actually need to make a table. And then in this table, we'll put C frame is C frame one. And now what we can do is we can copy this over. We can paste it here. Local tween two would be the same tween so instead of 0.5 seconds, we can put two seconds or however long we want it to take for the door to slide from the middle of the wall to the side where it's open. And then we take our C frame and instead of C frame one, we put C frame two. And actually what we need to do is make this three and this one two, because C frame one is actually our ending position. And then now what we need to do is we need to get the reverse of these tweens. So we copy both of these and we can put local tween three and local tween four would actually be C frame two. And for this one, we'll get C frame one. What we actually need to do is take this one and we need to put this on the very end because this is our ending tween. So we can call this one tween four, this one tween three. And now what we want to do is we'll make a table for all our tweens. So local tweens is a table with tween one, tween two, tween three, and tween four. So now that we have all our tweening info out of the way, what we can do, we can go back into Roblox. We can click on our part. We can insert an attachment. So wherever this is, is where our GUI will pop up to allow the player to open the door. So we see our dummy is this tall. We can put this right here, right in front of the dummy. So when you walk up to it, you'll see a little prompt show up. And what we can do, we can insert a proximity prompt into this attachment and what we do now we go into our door handler and we have to find this proximity prompt so what we'll do is local proximity prompt 
is part dot attachment dot proximity prompt and now whenever this proximity prompt is activated or triggered as it's called we can connect a function to it so what we can do is for number tween in pairs tweens do so what this will do it will run through every tween in this table right here so it'll go tween one tween two and then so on you know what we can do is tween equals play and then we need to wait for the tween to stop so what we can do is tween dot completed wait so this will wait for the tween to be completed but now what we need to do so the door doesn't shut on us instantly we can go here if number is three so if we're on our third tween this is reversing so we can put closing the door if number is three then what we can do is task dot wait close time so now before the door starts its closing sequence we'll wait our closing time of two seconds and lastly what we need to do we need to make a debounce so we can't just spam the door and it'll glitch out so we can do local debounce is false and then if debounce is false then we go here and debounce equals false debounce is true So now only if the proximity prompt hasn't been triggered, if this isn't already playing, will it activate the closing and opening of the door. So now what we can do, we can fix our formatting by pressing control A to select all, control X to cut everything, and then control V to paste it back in. And what this will do, it will fix how our script is formatted. So now it looks nice and clean. And now I can go ahead and test this out. So in the game, we see here that we have our door, we can run up to it. And we see our proximity prompt E to interact. So when we press E, it pushes the door out, it moves to the side, it waits our closing time of two seconds, and then it begins to shut. And then now we can press it again, it will do the same thing over and over again, and it works just fine. So lastly, if we want to customize, we can go to our proximity prompt. We can come here, we can say maybe the object text is door. So we can name our object door, and we can come up here, and instead of saying interact, can say open and then now in our script whenever the proximity prompt is triggered if the debounce is false then what we can do proximity prompt dot max activation distance is zero so when the door opens we won't see the proximity prompt as it slides along and then what we need to do at the end is set this back to 10 that max activation distance is 10. if you change this on your own down here in the proximity prompt make sure you change this in the script as well or there's no point of it so now whenever the door opens, the proximity prompt will go away, it will open the door, it will come back, and then it will end the function. All right, y'all, so that should do it for this video. If y'all have any suggestions or ideas y'all would like to see, please let me know. And thank y'all for watching. See you in the next video.